Ramen Pie started as a project that filled a need for another project that I'm still working on. I had to obtain the bond angle and ramen chefs for samples that I was producing. That called for a ramen spectrometer, and access to one is financially prohibitive, as even used units run tens of thousands of dollars. I set out to build a ramen spectrometer with no knowledge on the subject whatsoever. Since I started, the design has gone through four phases. I started with this misconception I was going to be able to obtain ramen signal with a more rudimentary setup, and then moved to the thought of using the Raspberry Pi camera module and a couple of edge filters. That notion might be fine with some extra time. I progressed into a series of lens mounts on stands in an optical bench type configuration. Some feedback from the Hackaday crowd and a couple of late nights, and it evolved into what it is today. Ramen Pi is fully open source. There's absolutely no secret sauce. Everything is available to everyone. I also use several open source libraries for the various sensors and other devices the system is composed of. There are also many open source libraries used in both the Raspberry Pi software as well as the client software. I had no idea I would take the design so far when I first thought about this project. And a look at what I have now, and wow, I think the 3D parts came out just amazing. I'm very happy with the spectrometer design. The fact that I was able to write the SCAD file to automatically change the dimensions, shape, angle for whichever optics you decide to use is way more than I ever hoped possible. Ramen Pi is centered around a Raspberry Pi, which is connected to the internet via a Wi-Fi adapter. It communicates with the client software as well as multiple online spectral databases to determine a match to the spectra of the compound under test. The client software in the Raspberry Pi exchange data, which is displayed on the user's workstation, phone, or tablet. The client software also gives the user the ability to store that data in the cloud, share it with friends or colleagues, and make graphs or presentations with it. The client software can use whatever internet connection the device has. Without an internet connection, Lama Pi wouldn't do much beyond display spectra from a sample on a local screen. It would not be able to identify what compound you are testing. There are a number of other uses for Raman Pi as a whole, as well as many components within the device. The entire system has many applications such as mineral identification, cancer research, biological studies, and a ton of others. You can extend that by adding the future expansions of I have planned, such as fiber optics, adapters, side scatter detection, and a few others. The spectrometer portion can be used completely independently of the whole system. Without modification, it can be connected to a PC through USB without the rest of the system and works as a fully functional spectrometer. To top that, you can also add future adapters to the spectrometer for many additional features such as fiber optics. The design can be reproduced very easily. For high volume production, you could use injection molding to make the 3D parts. 3D printing for lower quantities would be a totally acceptable option. The optics are right off the shelf and can be purchased individually or in bulk from companies like Edmund Optics. The electronics are very easy to source and they'll be integrated down to two boards for the whole system very soon. The CCD is inexpensive as well and is the same version commercial systems use. It is a complex device, but there is really not too much to it in a sense. I made every engineering choice with the idea of reproducibility in mind. I kept the design as simple as possible while keeping the integrity of a Roman spectrometer with a respectable spectral resolution. I also made sure the design was physically sturdy and would withstand the test of time. I kept the parts modular, simple, and in a format that's commonly used in the industry. The individual parts are easy to work with and the overall cost is unbelievably low in comparison to the alternative. The optical assembly and 3D parts are the showcase of the system in respect to ingenuity and innovation. This is a one-of-a-kind system and the only do-it-yourself Roman spectrometer design available, let alone open source. I've received a lot of positive feedback from many people who have tried to create a Roman system themselves with no success. I hope not to let them down. The modularity, ability to modify and tailor the parts to suit your needs, the use of two inexpensive edge filters as opposed to one expensive notch filter are a testament to the innovation. The spectrometer has been called a work of art. There's really nothing else like it. Not even commercial systems have this many features. I made sure to design every part of the device so that my own mother could use it without wondering what means what. The interface is very simple to understand and very easy to get up and running spectral right away. You don't even need to interpret a squiggly line and figure out what the compound is. The system will verbally speak it to you when it is identified. The client software should be available on a PC to start, then eventually phones, tablets, and even Chromebooks. The electronics consist of a control board, the power control board, an interface board, the imaging board, and the Raspberry Pi. The control, interface, and imaging boards are based on an ST Micro STM32 Nucleo F401RE microcontroller. The control board handles the nuts and bolts of the system, moving motors and reading sensors and so on. The interface board controls the display, the touch panel, audio and RGB LEDs. The imaging board manages the CCD and the reading of the spectra from the spectrometer. All the boards are connected to the Raspberry Pi via USB and their functions are dependent upon one another. The Raspberry Pi communicates through the internet, databases, and the clients. Currently, the control board functionally monitors the laser and cubet temperatures via two DS18B20 sensors. It controls the L298H bridge, which drives the two Peltier devices. One PLTA cools the CCD and the other cools and heats the cuvette to maintain its temperature using a PID controller. It also monitors the current draw for both PLTAs. In addition, it reads the cuvette end stops, controls the laser shutter servo, and both the TTL line and the power relay for the laser. Priorities have kept the laser good TEMT 6000 sensor, the BMP 180, and the laser color sensor on the back burner. The power control board currently performs all of its planned duties, which include taking in power from the mini ITX power supply, supplying power to all the other boards, housing the L298H bridge, the current sensor, and controls the system power with a nice stainless steel button. The interface board also currently performs all of its planned duties, controlling the TFT LCD display and taking input from the touch sensitive keypad. It also communicates that data to the Raspberry Pi when it has any user input. In addition, it controls the Arduino Pro Mini that drives the RGB LED ring. The imaging board is another success story with its duties of controlling the CCD detector array and obtaining spectra which it then sends to the Raspberry Pi or PC via USB. In the future, it will also monitor the UV index for detection of noise or fluorescence. It will also monitor the temperature of the CCD to compensate for noise and move the CCD tiny fractions of a millimeter from side to side to increase resolution. The optics section is a great success. All the plastic parts fit together perfectly. The unit is nice and solid. The laser shines, the beam bounces from the laser and hits the split Half the beam goes to the objective lens and the other half goes to the filters. The selector wheel spins and chooses the filter. The beam goes through and into the spectrometer, which images the spectra. I couldn't be happier. It just needs a little alignment and calibration. I have focused mainly on the design and construction of the electronics and the optics. The software that currently exists is mostly for testing. I will be devoting as much time to the software as I have the hardware in the very near future, as the hardware is getting very close to being complete. Overall, this has been a terrific learning experience. Hackaday has just been great in its efforts in encouraging participation. I would have been building this whether the contest existed or not, but being a part of it has made the experience far richer than I had imagined it could be. Thanks to everyone who has given me so much positive feedback in the past couple of months.